So you can just settle in to the posture, making any final adjustments, and then just accepting the posture that we've chosen. As we just relax into embodied presence, we can choose to meet our life right here, right here with this body as it is. Right here with this breath as it is. Just allowing the body and the breath to be really natural. We're not trying to force the body to be any particular way. We're not forcing the breath. We're not trying to change it. Just allowing the body and breath to have it say, oh, it's just like this, breathing naturally. Each of us will have a different pattern of breathing. But most importantly, we're cultivating this capacity to see the breath as nature. There's no reason to try to make it be a particular way because it is perfect just the way it is. We feel into the body with this attitude in mind. We feel into the breath with this attitude in mind. The body and breath, perfect just like they are. No reason to change. Just accepting the way it is. That's why we don't need to keep adjusting our posture because we're just accepting the body the way it is in this posture. That's why we don't need to do any special breathing because we're accepting the breath the way it is, just like this. It's like we're deciding to get real. This practice is so much about getting real. How is it right now? When we can get real, we can feel how it is, then we can participate, but not before we get real. Is it possible just to allow the body to be the body? Sensations to come and go. Allowing the breath to be the breath. Short, long, deep, shallow. Just allowing the breath to express its nature here and now. Not trying to change anything. So 
And at least in moments, it will feel possible to accept the body on the body's terms, the breath on the breath's terms. We can tune into how this feels. To not be doing anything special to make the body just right or the breath just right. Not trying to get anywhere with our body, with our breath. And that will feel nice. And in other moments, we might feel like, well, we have to do something to make the body better, to get more out of this experience, breathe differently. And that's just the misunderstanding. You can feel the tension that's there. When we're trying a little too hard. And this is how we learn, even that's not a problem. I guess we can simply remember, oh yeah, the breath is just nature, the body's just nature. It's possible to feel and to not fight, not try to change. Just to accept the breath and the body as it is. We can even bring in a little loving kindness just as we're breathing naturally and feeling the body. We can just appreciate this bomb. We're really making an effort to relate wisely to this body as it is. And that's nice. So in fact, we're caring for the body. We appreciate this body enough to be here for it. Enough to offer my wholehearted attention right here. May this body be safe and protected. May 
May this body be happy and healthy. May this body be at ease. Caring for the body with our presence. May this body be safe and protected. May this body be happy and healthy. May this body be at ease. And also appreciating the sensitive heart that can be right here. Right here with the body. Right here accepting or sometimes rejecting the body. The sensitive heart that feels into experience. Sensitive heart that can be intimate with experience, intimate with life. Starting right here with the breath and body. We care about the sensitive heart. Care enough to be sensitive, to feel what's here to feel. May this heart be happy, healthy, and at ease in the world. Breathing in a connection, an embodied connection with the heart that feels. Even if it's light, even if it's just, even this, if this heart is known in its capacity to be present, might feel very light. Knowing the heart might feel very light. I care about the sensitive heart. I 
you care enough to be attentive, to feel what's here to feel. May this heart be happy, healthy, and at ease in the world. And we can remember too that all of the people in this class doing our best to cultivate a sensitive heart and acceptance, the connection to our embodied presence. We can both appreciate our willingness to return to this practice and also the difficulty of it. We care about our sensitive hearts. care about our sensitive bodies. May this being be happy and peaceful. May these beings be safe and protected. May these beings be healthy and strong. May we be happy and peaceful. May we be safe and protected. May we be healthy and strong. Extending those good wishes to beings beyond the walls of our practice environment, our homes, or the center here. Extending to all sensitive beings. May we be happy and peaceful. May we be safe and protected. May we be healthy and strong. the last 10 minutes or so just feeling into the power of kindness as we stay connected doing our best to feel into the body and the breath
Kindness has no boundaries or limits. And so when we cultivate this habit to care, to appreciate our embodied experience, it naturally trans translates to anything. Let's see if we can feel into the ease of just being here with the breath and the body. Until you hear the sound of the bell.
Take a minute to move about or stretch your legs if you'd like. Just about 15 minutes left. If there's any reflections about the meditation or the specific practices that we've done, either tonight or in this class. Yeah, Natalie. Um, Mark? I can hear you. Okay, I touched my computer in the wrong place. <laughs> Okay, let me, uh, 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 here we go. So um, what I wanted to say was Mark made a lot of suggestions in the class. And one thing that I found very helpful to do, got back in, is to, he talked about changing your posture, experiment with posture. And um, I knew for myself that walking meditation, um, is harder for me because I, I get really distracted with looking around and you have to have your eyes open, obviously. <laughs> so um, what I did try uh, was lying down. And um, I particularly did that after yoga. And that was very, very effective. I was, I thought I might fall asleep, but I did not. And that was really nice to get acquainted with that because I do really enjoy that. Um, the other, the second thing that I tried was um, rocking. I have a rocking chair and had read in, about the effectiveness of rocking as far as stress and calming. Uh, Chief Arredondo of the Minneapolis Police Department was really quite into that. And so bought um, lots of rockers for the police officers to use. Uh, so, but anyway, I had not really used it for that purpose. And I did it before I went to bed, turned off the lights and just had this one small light on. Always do my meditation in the same room, usually in the same chair. And I loved it. I just loved it. And um, lately, because of some stress, I've been having some problems sleeping, which is very unusual for me. And I found that the rocking practice was very effective at helping me go to sleep r right away. Great. Yeah, it's great to experiment with different things and find out what works. You know, the Buddha stressed practicing in sitting, standing, lying down. Those are the three postures that we live in, right? Sitting, standing, and lying down. Standing is a flavor, you know, walking is one, mm -hmm. you know, it's just standing in motion. <laughs> so the upright posture, the lying down posture, and the seated posture are really the three ways to practice. And so any different variation of those can be really useful. And it's really okay. You know, I heard you say too, Natalie, that walking was hard because you're distracted. Yes. But the, the world is a full of distractions. So it's okay if we're walking and we're learning how to relate skillfully to distraction, right? That's fine. We have to, I mean, the Buddha said it's practice, so it's not perfection. And so even if the walking feels a little more difficult, because we're distracted, we can get good at noticing the distracted mind and how to make some peace with that, the mind that's distracted. And then if we're willing to continue it, even if it's hard, then we learn some skills about how to be with distraction in better and better ways, right? That's a good because point. the world is full of simulation. Mm -hmm. And so we're not going to be able to live in our rocking chairs or in our you know, nice little meditation places all the time, we're going to have to be with a lot of chaos and confusion and stimuli so much of our lives. And so we want to get more and more skilled and competent 
at being right there. Oh, it's like this. How do I take care of myself in this situation? How do I take care of the mind here? And I'm not saying that that's in any way easy, but I'm just saying it's a worthwhile, it's a worthwhile practice, even if it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's really great to be creative, like to recognize, well, at nighttime before I sleep, it's useful to do something soothing. And so what kind of practice feels more soothing than activating? What feels less energizing and more soothing? Well, perhaps sitting in the rocking chair in the repetitive motion with just the intention to soothe the system so that it can sleep is really nice. Sometimes lying on our backs can be that too. It can also, you know, lying on our backs is good to do at various points in the day because we can train ourselves to not only go to sleep when we lie down and to actually be aware when we're lying on our backs. Often when we lie, on our, we lie down, we'll fall asleep because it's just a habit, right? That's just the habit. That's just what we do. We lie down, we fall asleep. So there's this conditioned experience happening. You lie down, you fall asleep. It's cause and effect. Oh, we lie down. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fall asleep. But when we lie down and we're not tired, that might still happen. But we could open the eyes, we could raise one hand up when we're lying down or something like that to mm -hmm. see if it's possible to maintain awareness even while we're lying down. It can be a nice posture for the body, especially if there's body pain and that's, and that's useful to lie on our backs or it can be a soothing, a soothing posture if we can learn to be, stay awake for it. And it also doesn't have to be a problem to fall asleep, right? Because we can notice a lot about the mind while we're falling asleep. There's nothing we can do, you know, it's, we're not aware when we're sleeping. But while we're falling asleep, there's a lot to be mindful of. So we don't have to be afraid of just allowing ourselves to fall asleep because we're trying to learn. We also don't have to be afraid of falling asleep when we're tired, right? Because that might be the most useful thing. We lie down, with the intention to be aware, we're aware uh, for a little bit, but we're super exhausted and we just allow ourselves to fall asleep. What a gift, right? To just give mm -hmm. ourselves over to rest. We're busy. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's a very nice thing to do. Yeah. Anybody else want to jump in here? Well, I think I'm going to do an unusual thing and close our night because the rain has just slowed and I know it's going to pick up. So I'm a little bit aware that you all are traveling home and it might be a nice time to get out of the building. <laughs> so thank you for your for coming and for participating um, sincerely over the past six weeks. It's been nice to be with you the last couple of those and I hope to see you at Common Ground another time. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Thank you, Sally. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.